Good afternoon, this is Josie and Ned from Finest Playa. Today is Sunday, beautiful day outside, sunny, but a little bit chilly. Anyway, today we are going to show you uh, a special tea. It's a Tibetan tea and my husband is going to uh, make it. Uh, using a modified uh, manner of preparing it. So, let's uh, begin, but before we do, would you like to say hello? Uh, hello, good afternoon. It is wonderful to uh, see everybody today. And like Josie was saying, we're going to make some uh, Tibetan tea. And uh, just a little background on that. I had the great good fortune to uh, work in Nepal for several years and uh, a part of that was learning about the country and its wonderful diversity as it applies to people, as it applies to culture, as it applies to society, as it applies to geography. It's just an incredible place and I guess the first real drink that I came to appreciate there was tea, black tea with milk and sugar. But not long after I was there, I was introduced to another kind of tea, uh, very commonly referred to as Tibetan tea. Um, but uh, certainly other people dr drank it as well. Uh, Tibetan folk uh, prepared it particularly well. And after you get used to it, uh, you look forward to that just as much as uh, regular black tea with milk and sugar. Um, since I left Nepal, which has been quite some time, I've very often thought about having uh, Tibetan tea, but um, I never have, uh, simply because it's a little bit more involved to uh, produce it. But today, we're going to uh, do that, make some, and see what it's like. Uh, now this tea is, uh, we're going to use regular black tea. Um, sometimes uh, it, it, a, a smoky tea is used, but we're going to use regular black tea. And what you do is make tea, and then you put a little bit of salt in it, and then you introduce it to a churn with butter and then you churn it to emulsify the uh, uh, butter in the water, and then you strain that out, and usually you make quite a, a, a big pot of tea so that it's uh, good for a number of people mm -hmm. and, a, and a little bit of time. Right. Anyway, we're going to make it today uh, a little bit different uh, methodology, but, uh, Please bear with us as we go through the process and uh, discover with us what we turn up. Okay. Well, here we have all of the ingredients for our uh, Tibetan tea. A moment ago I said we were using black tea instead of uh, Tibetan tea or Lapsang Chuchong. Uh, I have been corrected and that is exactly what we have. Ingredients of course is may say it's a tea, we have some salt, we have some butter. And I'm going to start by using the, uh, putting the tea in the pot. And uh, we have about three teaspoons here. And it might be a little much, but we're going to see. But I'm going to put the tea in the pot. And then I'm going to add the water. This is good for, um, it should be two or three, even four cups of tea. I'm going to put a little bit of extra water in and uh, now I'm just going to let it steep for a second. And before we progress, just tell you a little bit about this, this tea. It's uh, a really refreshing tea. And in a place where people are working very, very hard outside the whole day, very often in, 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 in cold conditions, this is an incredibly refreshing cup of tea um, by itself. But in um, many Tibetan households, you will, uh, for a meal almost, you'll be given a cup of um, uh, millet flour or coarse millet uh, um, 
flower um, called Sampa. And you will mix this tea with your Sampa and uh, eat it like you would eat some cream of wheat or even oatmeal. But anyway, we have been, uh, this is, has been brewing now for about uh, two minutes. And we're going to, uh, now I'm going to add some salt. Uh, this sounds kind of strange because we all think about um, salt. Uh, we think about tea really as being something that is either neutral in taste or it's a little bit sweet. Now it's going to have the savory aspect of salt. I'm not going to put too much in because this is something new to us. Um, and, uh, with this, I am going to do the critical part. Now, as we were mentioning before, if you're going to make Tibetan tea, if a Tibetan was making tea in Tibet or Nepal or places where, um, uh, you get, um, Tibetan people, they would be using a churn to do the emulsifying. And we don't have that. So what I'm going to do is put the butter in. We have about a tablespoon and a half here. That may be enough, it may not be. And put it in, just like that. And then we have a hand churn, like this. This one actually comes from, I think, Bangladesh. But it should do the trick. The butter is in the pot here. And I am going to start what we call Hickory, North Carolina, emulsification of butter in tea to make a pot of Tibetan brew. And I am doing it now. We have the um, butter is, uh, it was very warm butter to begin with, but now it is uh, very much melted in here and we are emulsifying. And uh, see what it looks like. It looks uh, not quite so appetizing. There's a cup of black tea, but we're experimenting. Up uh, me, Josie, and all of you all. And now I have done. I'm going to do this about 30 seconds now. Okay. It smells really nice. I'm sorry you can't smell it, but. Uh, we're going to report to you in just a moment on the taste. Um, see how it tastes, see how it is. And like I say, if you uh, aren't used to uh, a savory tea, it's a, um, it's a uh, brew that uh, takes some getting used to. Um, first time I had it, I was very sick. And... Um, Young lady brought me some tea, and I thought it was a, a nice cup of um, a nice cup of uh, sweet tea, and it was actually this. Uh, now, uh, and it was it's quite a surprise for me. What we have now is the tea, the brewed tea. Uh, we have uh, added some salt to it. We've added some butter to it. We've used a churn to mix the butter in. It looks like it's very well mixed in. So now I am going to pour both of us a cup of tea and um, see what we have. There's one. As you can see, the tea is not clear. It's a little bit cloudy. Of course, that's the butter. And um, now we're going to, as we say here, check her out. Anyway, uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a cloudy, um, a, a, a milky, buttery tea. Okay, so, um, uh, Ned has shown you how to, uh, make the Tibetan tea, and, uh, here it is. So, it's time to have a sip. Or we could say a sip. Come test, see how we like it. Mm. Not 
Mm, it's, it's very really nice. It's really good. You could I could taste the, um, the smoky tea and the um, natural, excuse me, taste of butter and it's a uh, salty um, taste. It is very nice. It is uh, soothing. Um, very good for this kind of uh, cold weather and uh, in a minute we'll go outside and sip our tea in the uh, in the open in the garden yes it is it's uh, uh, surprisingly tasty and um, I think it is a it's a new with, taste for me with just a little bit of um, development a little bit of um, adjustment I think we're going to be able to uh, produce a really, really pleasant Tibetan kind of tea. And it's, it's so nice to, to have a tea uh, that's different. I mean, just like green tea, black tea, chai, chamomile. Uh, it's a wonderful blessing that we've been given um, that allows us to enjoy uh, what Mother Nature produces right. uh, mm -hmm. as a drink. Mm -hmm. um, I've tasted it mm -hmm. now, I've drunk about a third of the cup, and I think it's very nice. Uh, uh, the next time we do it, I believe that I will probably use just a little bit less tea because the tea is actually quite strong, mm -hmm. and either use less tea or perhaps brew it for a shorter period of time because you remember when we're making this tea, we brewed it, just the tea, uh, with hot water over it for about two minutes. And then we added the salt. Uh, we dissolved the salt very nicely, stirring it around. And then we added the butter and we used the stir to emulsify it. And what that does, especially when it's brewing just the tea and the water, is that it's getting to be very strong. Uh, less so after you put the salt in it, less so after you put the butter in it, uh, because that slows down the absorption mm -hmm. uh, yes. of the tea into the water. Um, but uh, anyway, I think it's very nice. I think for, this is the first time it that is. I have had Tibetan tea First time that we've had it together. First time that I have had yes. it in about 40 years. And it's uh, not quite that long. But it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very good first stab at reproducing the wonderful drink that I was introduced in Nepal um, during the um, 70s and 80s. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us today. And um, I hope that you will uh, have a chance to um, use, uh, produce some uh, tea. I just very quickly wanted to show you, like we don't, we don't have a churn, like a, 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 a butter churn, but we use this. And I think uh, anything would do, Josie, before we were doing this, was experimenting using a whisk. And I think that a whisk would work very well, as, uh, very well too. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that there are many options uh, that will allow you to make this really, really tasty tea with things that you have in your kitchen. Probably also a handheld uh, uh, mixer would, would do, yes. uh, you think. I think it would. Yeah. But we also have uh, some cookies here to go with our Tibetan tea. And I never turn down a cookie, especially the biggest one on the bottom of the stack. <laughs> um, anyway, this is, uh, is all for now. Thank you for uh, being with us. If you have the chance, try to make this um, specialty and uh, savor it yourselves. So uh, take good care, stay healthy, bye from us. Namaskar. Yes. Namaskar. Namaste.